Welcome back everyone to Wellstopia and today we are going to start our work on the ordeals which means first getting rid of this thing we created it only for the purpose of eventually getting rid of it so therefore it is time to get rid of it first so that we have a nice open area and also I need to Oh, what a way to start. All right. So first things first is to make sure that this is a little wit lit. <laughs> uh. Yeah. All right. Let's get this thing all lit up. Oh yeah, that we can get rid of the redstone now. Especially since it's not doing anything at the moment. Good. So, the idea there is to first get this thing open. Now, I'm going to want an area that goes nine away from this. And we'll just have this here, and we'll go nine blocks out in all directions. Yep. This is going to be larger than the usual area you have for a spawner, so therefore it's going to extend a bit away from where the, right, okay, away from the spawner is. That means we're going to have to do all sorts of fun things to keep anything from spawning, since we're not only going to get the zombies, but other things if I'm not careful. And we don't want things, nasty things like creepers popping up around here. This is the point where it dawns on me just how big four nine by nine quadrants which means 19 by 19 in all can be now you may be wondering why do i want it to be that large that's because we're going to have four elements and i wanted each element to be nine by nine well actually nine by nine is measuring by the walls so the interior is probably only eight by eight so i have this area for each of the four elements and since there are four elements that means it is going to be a pretty significant thing to worry about <laughs> so therefore it goes all the way out there out there out to there and this nice secure location I made for my crafting and storage is actually in one of the modules. Ha! Huh. Got to move a few things. Now the good news is that I am in need of a great deal of stone and by the time I'm done with this I should have enough to last me well for at least an episode. And here we have it. Actually this might come out to be just the size I need because people coming down from this way It'll just come up to here and it'll be one nice room here. So therefore, I think this will actually work out. Good. Now, we need the outer wall. I know all that trouble to get all that out. And now I need an outer wall. Uh, in case you want to know about the torches here, I decided to put them out four and four. So therefore... The torches outline an 8x8 eight eight area, eight, or I should say 8x8 eight eight quadrants, with this in the center, so therefore that will be 17x17 seventeen seventeen is outlined by the torches. And then it comes 1919 by the extra thing on the end, which is where we are going to put our walls. Now the question is, what type of walls do we want? Now, I figure that for this particular task, I don't use cobble all that much, but I think that will actually look right for the task. In fact, that's why I wanted to move all the stones, to get rid of all the smooth stone that was there, so that I could replace it with a cobble. And the idea of cobble is, it looks all broken up and to me it looks a little bit on the creepy side sometimes and I know a lot of builders like using it because it I think it makes things look 
broken up sometimes or something like that or aging or the like I know some people like how it looks I don't particularly like how it looks but I think in this particular case you I want the <sighs> I want the environment to be a little bit mm, uh, let me think I think it fits in well with that's what's used in spawners and the like but I think it is going to add to the environment of what's going on in here because there's one of the areas that's going to be a maze and I think cobble can look a little disorienting and that's perfect for a maze I still need to do something to the ceiling but I want to think about that I don't know exactly how high I want the ceiling to be or what I suspect I'm not going to have a pure ceiling in any case because I'm thinking that the officials will want a place where they could remain and view what's going on and that means not having a ceiling covering it up so I suspect I'll most likely have an observation area for some seating in here that will have to have a good view of this but I don't want to do that until I have this done because I won't know what would be a good view until I have the inside done now I need to split this up into four elements and that's going to be fire earth air water now this is going to be our entrance when we enter into here hmm let me put this here all right so because what we're going to do is we are going to have walls covering in each area here like that and that these are going to be walls so therefore they're not going to be able to see the spawner now of course the spawner is going to be active actually since they're not going to be able to see the spawner let's cover that up for now so each of these is going to be associated with an element and they have to get through all four of them now this is going to be a maze so therefore this is going to be probably one of the walls of the maze hmm because you have to be able to get in and out ah we need a separate exit of course because if you had the same entrance and exit then someone could walk in turn around walk out and claim that they walked the whole thing now of course I know we got the officials and all that stuff but we have to keep people from doing silly things so therefore we will need a separate entrance and exit so let us close that off and we'll put an entrance now maybe that wasn't a good idea to close that off until I measured out the that's why I wanted yeah know where you want your entrance and exit before you start going around blocking things off alright now how about right at the midpoint so therefore we will have an entrance right here so this one we are at the end of the wall hmm. so therefore I will use this as the exit point good and uh, that means we could do that now of course we are going to We are going to have to figure out what we're going to do in, with light in the long run because that's obviously going to be an important factor in all that goes on here. Now, a lot of the floors in this area are going to be spawn proof. Now, when I say spawn proof, I mean to avoid getting random spawns, things like creepers and skeletons. Enderman and, and the like so we're going to make it spawn proof now of course things in the middle they are 
still going to spawn zombies because, well, zombie spawners bypass a couple of rules on spawning, so therefore we are going to have those things spawn, but not stuff from, not regular stuff. Of course, when you're going through the ordeal, random stuff is probably not going to spawn anyway because you're going to be too close for things to spawn. So we do have uh, that. But I'm going to try to make things as unlikely as possible. Because I am going to have to remove the torches and all this stuff. So I probably will have a good deal that is going to be on slabs and the like. And yes, these walls are going to be taller in the long run. It's just that for now, I'm just outlining to give you an idea of what I'm going to be doing. Alright, so here we have, you come in through here. And we'll have to go through the first maze in here. Let's see if we go to start there. I think the first wall can be here. And we want to move around like this. Now this is going to be the earth maze. So it's going to be a lot of cobble all over. As I said, I think cobble is a disorienting block and when you do mazes, that is exactly what you want. Fire, let's see, that's for fire her. This is going to be water. I'm still not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing with water. And of course, this is going to be for the end. And I imagine I'm going to have a higher ceiling for this particular section because this one is going to involve. I think a bit of jumping and stuff like that because we are going through the end and it's going to be the fourth one we're going to do so it's going to be the end in more ways one because it's going to be the end of their ordeal if they get through it but I figure we are going to have their going through here doing a lot of jumping oh yes of course ah that's it that's why we could have only a single entrance because That's the idea. All right, because what we're going to do. All right, they're going to be forced in that direction. But eventually, to exit, they're going to have to do it through the air. Now, I'm, I'm going to be putting these stair steps here for now. But in the long run, they're going to have to be doing a bit of jumping in order to get to the top. And that's how they get to the exit and be able to triumph and all that stuff. Right, I like that. And so therefore, we retain the symmetry here. Well, okay, it doesn't look very symmetrical on the outside. But the idea is that you're between two elements. You enter in through an element here, and you go through the cobblestone in entering each of the four elements. And so I still need to decide what to do there. So now... With that decided upon, we have to think about flooring because right now I dug down to here. This is below the floor level. I need to add the flooring first. Now we're going to have the trial of fire. And the trial of fire is not going to have the most comfortable flooring you can find. Fire means the nether, and the nether means. Yeah. Nether rack, soul sand, magna block, nether brick, those types of materials. And the magna block seems like the perfect flooring material. Oh, isn't this going to be joyous? So the idea here then is that much of this floor is going to be magna block. Now we are also going to have some soul sand, so I will give a path here that's with soul sand. Now, you're saying, wait a minute, soul sand is a very slow block. So the question is whether you're encouraging the player to use the soul sand or discouraging them by using it. It's That's hard to tell. 
and therefore they're pretty much are going to then have their own option as to which course they're going to take. So this isn't purely a maze, meaning that there's only one solution. Because one of the solutions is, of course, to, is to use the soul sand. But that's going to be the slowest block to use. Because, yeah, because you slow down whenever you're within the soul sand. And you can imagine then we've got this zombie spawner here that's hopefully pumping out some zombies in here. And of course you're going slowly in here, so you're going to be running into a few zombies here and there. On some of the other places, we are going to have magna block magma blocks. Now, magma blocks are going to have a bit of a problem in that they tend to Remember the lighting. So that's going to be the greatest challenge on this. Are they going to be preventing spawns? If they are, I may have to come up with another solution on the matter. But yeah. Uh, let's see. But anyway, you can either go through fast and have have that happen, or you could go through slowly. Oh, and probably have a couple of things like that happen. Now, that's here, there, but I think occasionally we will, of course, instead of magna blocks, we'll have some another rack with our old friend. We want that, we want that, we want that. Let's get rid of that. Because what's a fire module without a little bit of fire? Good, it, I think. Get a nice wall of fire here will be nice. Good. And here we could put some magma. All right, good. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to make this a little bit moodier. This is just your initial draft. Hmm. Yeah, we take away the torches and the like, and the place starts to darken up. I think it will look a lot creepier in what's going on there. But that's essentially the draft of what we want to do. I may, th oh yes, of course, occasional nether brick walls here and there because while the user, while the initiate does have a couple of things they could decide what to do, I think one or two places we're just going to say, uh, no, like, like this block right here, these two blocks here. That would just be too easy to run across that. So here you have to go through a little bit more, so therefore we get away. Because if you do that, yeah, it's a bit of a shortcut. Let's see what is going to be optimal. What is going to give just enough problems for the trial, but not make it, obviously not make it fatal. Or will it be? Of course it will be fatal for the week, but that's an entirely another matter. But I think that's all the time we have today. I am going to ponder details on this little thing here. And then start to think about what we want to do for... Well, actually, I know what we want to do for Earth. We want to have a, a true maze in here. Earth. Earth is going to be claustrophobic. A real maze. Going through there, you are... You're going to be going through all here, through the long, windy path, perhaps making a dead end or whatever. Meanwhile, zombies are going to be popping up in here because if this thing does prevent mobs from spawning here and 
there because of of light in there. If that does happen, then that means that we are going to wind up with probably a few more spawns right over here. And that means even more fun for our friends when you are in the... Oh, okay. Good thing I checked that out. That when you are going through the Earth phase, you are going to have a few more little tricky bits. Because this is probably just going to warm you up, shall we say. Then you're going to get your claustrophobia in there. Then you have to worry about your... trying to get through all this water and stuff like this and probably trying to fight zombies while you're in the water and all that fun stuff so that's going to be real fun and now the parkour course I think the parkour is going to be the main thing because zombies don't do parkour very well but I think that's it for today and we return next time we will see about these other modules but until then this is Piney Noodles reminding you to mine responsibly